Secular Proton is posing a hypothetical scenario. Joe Biden is planning a regime change in Iran by staging a coup. He asks you if he should proceed or not, and you have the final say. What do you say? I say, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, That's a... I'm real scared. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I would never, I hope, like, it's, it's good that we would never be in that position, okay? Because this is like damned if you do this is the ultimate damned if you do damn if you don't situation right like it went so okay. well for us the first time right no like okay so for okay so here's the thing um let's say no and let's say yes okay and let's see what happens okay why would you say no you would say like when was the last time the united states did a regime change that went well right um you you have to go all the way to world war ii to find one that worked well. Actually, maybe Serbia, maybe like the Baltics as well. Okay, so <laughs> right. So yeah, the, but but then people have examples of like I don't know Syria, you know, trying in Syria, Iraq, uh, the coup that the CIA tried in Iran. I mean, technically, the mullahs in Iran could also be um, part of the. Yeah, well, the, the, like there are many, many examples, right, um, of horrible it, it going horribly, it going really horribly, right, and especially, especially when in Iran, if you say now, if you say yes, um, and say, if you, w w one reason why you want want to say no is because as bad as the mullahs are, are you going to have how much blood are you going to have on your hand if because of this coup? There's like a multi-decade civil war in Iran, right? And destabilizing the region for many, many years after. Like this going to, it's going to, it might draw in so many conflicts. Um, and you like let's say even if you think like, yeah, regime change is good, is a good idea in Iran, but just with the in case there is a, even a five percent chance that there's going to be civil war for decades after in, in Iran, are you gonna do you wanna have as somebody that is sitting in a safe position from all the costs that people would have to pay, do you want to make that decision for the people over there? Do you know what I mean? Like, let's say there's a 5% chance that this this is going to go horribly, that there's going to be civil war in Iran because of regime change, right? And you made the decision. So you had the potential of 95% chance of potentially seeing a good result for uh, the Iranian people and then taking the credit for doing a good, good coup and whatever. But... The cost of the five percent, if it goes bad, it doesn't come to you. It goes to like the, the people who are dying. So you're making a decision that you don't have to pay the cost for it, right? So those are the reasons why you might want to say no. Let's not do this, right? But the reasons why you might want to say yes is like if you say no, then the people in Iran who are basically have been taken hostage by a regime. Uh, imagine you had a position you were in a position to say that you you were able to free them from this regime and you decided because it was a burden on you to be responsible for a civil war you decided to, not to go through with it because you were like oh it was too heavy on my conscience and they're like they they're paying the cost of living under this regime uh, and you decided to not free them because like oh i'm, I'm too scared like, oh, oh like oh poor you like we're being tortured here uh, we're like the country's going economically is suffer is going, you know, guys, when the country is suffering economically, don't tell me that it's just like, it's because of sanctions. Okay. Like most of it is because of bad management by the, by the regime. Right. Um, and, and they people say are paying so. The, yeah. So <laughs> themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They say so. Yeah. But, but yeah. And they brag about it. They brag about putting people in hardship. They say it builds character. Right. It prepares you for the next world. Um, so, but 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 what what I can say for definitely is that I'm glad that I would never have to make that decision. Do you know what I mean? That I'm not. I'm never going to be in that position to have to make that choice. I do not envy anybody who would ever have to make has to make that choice, right? Um, because I don't know. I, I can't see in the future. What I would say though um is that if you look at the french revolution 
if it, like for example like it's very it's very interesting it's very similar to in iran right now most people want secular democracy statistics show that right and more a lot of people have moved away from religious way of, of thinking and a lot of people have even left islam right uh, apparently more than half of the goddamn country which is unbelievable right um but and you can see like the enlightenment values and the need for democracy and uh, it has ha has been growing in iran and it actually has been growing in iran for a very long time like even before the islamic revolution um in 1979 uh, the the push for a parliament the push away from push for moving powers away from the king towards the people happened in iran before other middle eastern countries which is amazing like there was a constitutional uh, revolution in iran that happened very very early on in early in the 19th century right so but now has grown to such a degree where people even re even religious people want secular democracy right um so you can see that the background, if you compare that to what happened in Europe, um, you could compare that to the, the age of enlightenment in Europe, which eventually led to the French Revolution, right? So you could say like, would this lead to a revolution in Iran? Well, if you compare that to the French Revolution, it did, the French Revolution didn't turn out so well initially, right? Um, there was a lot of heads chopped off, a lot of heads chopped off including the main people responsible for starting the revolution, right? People were going choppy choppy on each other's head, like just left and right with, with no hesitation. Um, and there was like so much conflict within France for many, many years after the French Revolution. So, and then what happened after all the choppy choppy, the Na Na Napoleon came to power, which was like a, a bigger tyrant, a bigger dictator than the king was before him, right? Uh, so if you look at it that way, the revolution failed right you had an age of enlightenment you had the french revolution you had people betraying the ideals of it, like valuing human life no they chopped everyone's head off rivers of blood and then you ending in a dictator right uh, that looks like a failure but then wait a couple of more decades you see that the ideas of enlightenment eventually did result in all of western europe progressing at a rapid speed relative to the rest of the planet in a way that is unimaginable like made even the the, the success of even countries outside of the uh, uh, western european countries was because of them being aligned with them like united states canada australia and eventually later japan south korea hong kong taiwan all of these were like influenced by enlightenment ideas that's why they became advanced countries right um so short-term cost of the revolution seemed like so horrible that it was not worth it but longer term it seemed like hey these revolutions were worth it like the american revolution and french revolution seem to be have been worth it so if we go by history even if there if the if this i would assume okay that if this if the regime topple if the government of iran falls um but the the multi-decade cost of that in iran even if it's so high um, that we will think this was a mistake, this was a big mistake, I think you can't judge that after 20 years. You could only ju judge whether if it was a mistake or not after 100 years, right? Um, it, could, it could have a short-term high cost, but a long-term benefit. But again, I cannot prescribe that for the Iranian people because I'm not living there, right? And if I say like, hey, yeah, let's topple the regime because short term, it would be a low cost. Long term, it would be a good, it would be beneficial. Who's going to pay that cost? Who's going to pay that 20 year cost, the multi-decade initial cost? It's not going to be me, right? Potentially, I'm not saying there will definitely be a, it could, you know, it could be no cost, but if there is a cost, I'm not going to be paying it. So I can't decide that for the people, right? That's why. I, I would like to wash my hands off of it. Thank you very much, right? But I, I personally, I prefer the to regime to be toppled. Personally, that's my personal preference. But I cannot make that decision for, for the people that are actually living there. Topple doesn't necessarily mean U.S. interference in the form of regime change, though. Yeah, but but at this point, the people who want toppling, they're saying by any means possible because there there's not that many options. 
Well, the U.S. doesn't that... want regime change. Yeah, know, yeah. This is all. this is why this is why this is hypothetical. They don't want. Yeah. Obviously, this is not. This is guys. Yeah. For again, Susanna is assuming that some of you are idiots, which is accurate. Um, this was a <laughs> this is completely a hypothetical. This was this was a question that was not is not describing the situation at hand. Like there is no plan for regime change by the United States. But yeah, so this was completely hypothetical. Go. Oh, this is so stupid. No, that isn't the only option. Just because you're bombarded with constant CIA propaganda about what people in Iran think doesn't justify a regime change. <gasps> Oh my god. Okay. Saudi no, Arabia is I, way worse than Iran. Yeah. Okay. I mean Saudi Arabia. I don't Arabia even know where Iran... to begin. Okay, so that last part <laughs> there, like um yeah, you're an idiot, Mike. Um go, you know, you're beyond hope. The people in <laughs> Only Iran only one not... of the most informed people on Iran from no. <laughs> no 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 stop that. No, no, no. Like we have we have way too much evidence, Mike. You're an idiot you're deluded you've been brainwashed by uh tankies um so and also who here defended saudi arabia like what an idiotic what about is him here like do we say y y look how dumb and s simplistic your way of thinking is right you it think like worse. we're saying yeah you think when we say iran iran's regime bad that means saudi arabia good Look and at this. Look Saudi at Arabia is them. literally genociding Yemen with weapons. We sell them. We know. We talk what? about it all the time. How? We hate it. <laughs> Mike, how stupid do you have to be? Do you think when we say Iran, the situation in Iran is bad, does that mean that we're defending Saudi Arabia? Like, who even mentioned what Saudi Arabia? What aboutism of it all? This is the strongest case of what aboutism I've ever seen in my life. Mike, you... I thought, who was that other guy? I thought that was the dumbest person in the live chat. That's not it, Mike. You make that person look like a genius. You're, you are. Mike is you just are... butt hurt that we don't simp for communism. Yeah. Oh, oh, this guy's a tanky. Okay. Here's the thing. Every single tanky is an idiot. Okay. There is no exception. This is like this is a form of generalization that is allowed because it's objectively true. Okay. Every single tanky is a moron. Um. Anyways, let's move I'm on. I'm okay with that. <laughs> this is so funny, Brother Ben. I'm here in Ar Armin's audience because I'm a sadist. No, it's a masochist. <laughs> You're a masochist. Do me next, Armin. <laughs> call me stupid. Okay, I will call you stupid because you can't tell the difference between a sadist and a masochist. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, good. Armin right, is the sadist. <laughs> <laughs> True. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.